We have with us a very special guest joining us in the studio, Jagannatham Thunukuntla. He's strategist and head research at SMC. Jagan, let's talk about uh, what's been happening. It seems like a case of a scam a day. That's a run rate. I mean, how do you look at the markets in this situation? I know December pretty much over, but would this continue to be a big factor even in 2011? Seems like, uh, but only problem is Indians, we have a habit of uh, forgetting everything and uh, one thing, I think a lot of complacency got added into the market. For example, if you see last one month's events, even though scams have been coming uh, almost on a daily basis, there is a sense of denial. I mean, it's okay, nothing will happen and uh, the so-called India growth story will cover up everything and uh, uh, so that kind of mindset. I think slowly, even how long the market can take, uh, all that piled up is uh, immediately showing up on the markets and moreover, even before and uh, some of the hedge funds and FAs would like to book some of the profits and uh, to show some cash in their portfolios. Uh, but having said that, uh, a big crash may not be anticipated before December in the sense uh, uh, nobody would like to say their portfolios going down before the bonus day meant for uh, Christmas and that's, uh, that has been the global trend. Uh, I believe to that extent uh, some big crashes can be avoided at least till December. I think January, February, March I think uh, so, uh, we will get into with uh, a gloomy outlook. Okay, let's stick to that. Smaller the mid caps, I'm, you just literally get amazed. 13% cut in the last five days. Do you think it's going to take a lot before investor sentiment comes back, especially on these smaller the mid caps? We discussed in the past the markets go up on staircase, they come up come down on escalator. So if, while the markets move up, uh, this, this time moved up, but uh, they are coming down equally with the same uh, vigor and same intensity. And uh, this, the small caps and mid caps are bound to fall more than the large caps, no two opinions about it. Because if you have a portfolio where the market mood is very nervous, you would like to sell it off those small and mid cap companies where you don't have much clarity about their portfolio, their performance or say profit margins or sustainability. Whatever. In comparison to, let's say, if you have Infosys in your portfolio or a, or a let's say, SBI in your portfolio, portfolio or HLA in your portfolio. It's natural for small caps and mid caps uh, to get to take the major major hit. On top of that, this is also the reason why retail investors tend to lose more money because generally retail investors get attracted towards this uh, small caps and mid caps. And uh, so understandably, they mo more often than not, whenever the markets fall, they end up uh, being the big losers. So this time, uh, yes, small cap and mid caps and again have been bear the maximum burnt. Okay, let's uh, keep the scams for uh, for a while. Let's keep them aside for a while. Let's talk about 2011. What are the key ideas, key themes you're focusing on? This year didn't start off on a very good note, but then it built on. We saw consumption coming back on the forefront. Bank stocks came out pretty strongly. Similar kind of trend or do you think some new ideas, new convictions, new themes should be focused on? While the, m most of the points that you raised are domestic, I believe 2011 and 12 will feature with a lot of international activity as well because a uh, uh, lot of realignment re and readjustment has been happening in the uh, global uh, global context, be it uh, uh, China, uh, China US currency war or be it uh, Euro uh, reshaping and I think so much is happening in, on the global front. I believe uh, that is going to set, uh, set the tone. Uh, for for example, if you take, uh, if you take uh, Euro European uh, area, still the problems have been uh, very, very clear. And we have seen Greece and we have seen Ireland and Iceland and now uh, Italy is on the way, Spain is on the way, Portugal is on the way. So there is no end to the uh, list, uh, so to speak. And as far as the China and the US and that problem is always ongoing. Now what will happen is one scenario is if a major crisis because of which the lot of money going back to the US, US dollar, so that dollar index getting stronger, so that the dollar carry trade uh, positions that got built up, they getting unwind. So already a crisis and dollar carry trade unwinding, I think that will be the very, very uh, serious situation that will be, that needs to be handled. I think that may happen sometime in uh, 2011. If it didn't happen in 2011, 2012 almost guaranteed. Okay, and uh, what about capital flows? Do you think these recent scams, the negative news flow and all the negativity built around it and of course the year end and so on and so forth, pick up in developed markets, Euro, you know, US, do you think somehow capital flows would not be as smooth the way they flew into Indian markets in 2010? Seems like because uh, foreign investors have been observing the Indian market developments very, very closely. Uh, while scams are not new anywhere in the world, like they do happen almost on, on, in every country. That's not the, that's fine. But emerging markets often come with uh, this, uh, uh, this set of, uh, this set of issues. And al this also raises the point that uh, we, why we are remaining as developing and why we unable to get that stamp of developed kind of stamp. I think because we, we are getting carried away with the short term uh, benefits and uh, we, are, we are forgetting the long term uh, 
uh, benefits and the uh, benefits. I think it's high time for the regulators and uh, government and policy makers to see, to see that angle and uh, ensure the brand, India, to be protected in that context in the eyes of the global uh, arena and phenomena so that uh, the inflows uh, can be kept uh, intact. But most of these issues haven't been, aren't really new. I mean, we've all known and talked about these as to how price rigging is done to try and bump up a stock before any QIP happens. Do you think now, at least from the regulatory side of it, things will be looked into a very, very stronger fashion with a lot of uh, insight before a stock starts moving up like the way they did in the last few months? That, that, is, that is the point. For example, we got into that kind of complacent and denial mode that, I mean, we, we know that these things happen and then we can move on. But that, that's not the way it should be. I think it's probably we are standing even on that front uh, a, a stage of uh, cr uh, crossroads where probably we have to evolve and we have to re reshape ourselves and start saying that we are truly, truly emerged country and we are truly a country where uh, uh, we are reliable in that context and we are transparent enough and uh, so that more, more money will come, not just the hard money. Even the FDI and more stable money and who wants to stay back in India and then uh, can invest. Yesterday I was uh, with one of the FIs and he is clearly making the point that what India is currently getting is only a spillover flows from China. That means after putting so much money in China, the risk managers generally say, uh, boss, why are you taking so much exposure in China? Why don't you take in some other country? Only those flows are coming to India. There is nothing called allocation separately to in India. So in that context, uh, uh, India has to move up their brand image in the, in the, global, in the eyes of the global investors. I it's, it's high time. It's high time, especially after the telecom controversy. Okay, we'll take a break, come back and I'll talk more about uh, the sectoral ideas that Jagan has for 2011. What would he be looking at more aggressively? Stay with us, coach break, we'll be back. Welcome back. Uh, we're discussing the outlook for 2011 and the current controversy and its impact on the markets. Chagan, uh, what do you prefer, the investment or the consumption related themes? I know uh, consumption linked themes have been talked about, uh, but infra to an extent has been a clear underperformer. Do you think uh, even for people who want to make money in this market, there are still opportunities and well, why go any far? Infra has been a big underperformer. It's not all that bad the way it's been made to look like. Order books of some of these companies is pretty big and that provides a lot of earnings visibility. Do you think infra about time, I mean about time the market looks at this sector in a close fashion. I believe if consumption and investment have to be chosen, I think in consumption still scores because investment there are so many external factors that needs to be addressed, be it uh, political angle, be it uh, credit uh, lines from the banks and that be it lack of bond market or uh, lack of uh, enough private equity funding that goes for the infrastructure. I think uh, there are enough uh, pitfalls or enough uh, areas where uh, something can go wrong on investment front, whereas consumption can be a uh, obvi obvious easy choice when in comparison to that. Having said that, infrastructure growth will happen. One should be very, very patient and one should be a lot of patience and uh, that kind of conviction should be there and to hang around. So then only probably in, in, uh, in investment related theme can will also uh, play up. On top of that, um, the, 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 the the investment, the, the consumption side also, the one point is still an average Indian is, uh, is, is while he is spending, only question is in, on what areas he is spending and then uh, still the element of cost consciousness still there, the element of that brand awareness while it is picking up, it is still taking time. I think uh, if he has to choose between brand and cost, he is ch still choosing the cost only, I mean not necessarily the brand. I think once that brand gets chosen, I think uh, as China, uh, as has been happening with the last two, three years in China and because the average Chinese consumer is becoming more brand conscious than average Indian uh, uh, consumer. So that is one more area probably will open up uh, for the branded, branded retail uh, uh, segment in India. Okay, so consumption is something you're focusing on. Uh, let's talk about earnings. Uh, the last quarter numbers were, I would say, pretty disappointing. Nothing exceptional about it. We were all talking about that how we could see earnings upgrade happening at either in the sec third quarter or even in the fourth quarter. Do you think that gets pushed up? We have not really factored in the impact of commodities, which could be a wild card here. How would you look at the earnings growth at least for the next few quarters? I believe it will be a moderated growth because the base is increasing so much and uh, we, should, we should not forget that, uh, uh, that we have been growing very fast for the last uh, fairly 5-6 years and bases have almost doubled. So maintaining that kind of growth uh, continuously becomes uh, that way difficult. I think FL11, uh, 18 to 20 percent growth, I think that will, that, that will be the uh, best case scenario probably one will be arguing and because unless something happens uh, in terms of liquidity crunch or anything in the last three months. I 
think that will be the that will be the growth uh, probably we'll be witnessing. And I believe all that has been already factored into the markets. That is another fundamental argument uh, uh, that we need to remember. I think the fundamental related strength has been factored into the markets. If at all uh, somebody is expecting any uh, uh, any any valuation gap that is pending with earnings, I don't think anything any any such gap is uh, pending. I think we have been fully priced. No question about that. And whatever growth you see, you see from which sectors coming in. The growth, if at all, you see, fairly will grow, no question about it, because GDP, IAPs, everything is intact and uh, liquidity and RBI, we have a sensible regulators, RBI, SAB, everything is intact. I think growth will happen. That, that, that is fine. Only thing is the kind of extraordinary growth, that, is, that blockbuster kind of growth and warranting a 20 times uh, PE multiple at the broad sensex level, whether that, will, that is warranted is the, is the question. We will be easily one of the best growing countries in the world, no two opinions, and uh, we will be still uh, favorite uh, uh, investment uh, destination for many of the FAs that will also be maintained. Most of the things will remain as it is, but only thing is the, sometimes it looks, we have moved way ahead in terms of, in terms of our own uh, image in, in, in the global, global scenario. Probably what we warranted probably in 2013-14, probably we got in 2010-11 kind of uh, uh, scenario. That way, uh, the overall picture will remain the same, only adjustment of some euphoria, uh, the, it's natural, right? It's like a Coke bottle, naturally some fizz is bound to uh, get created. So, Are you concerned on the uh, recent events, at least on the banking side? I mean, uh, the expo their exposure to microfinance, their exposure to real estate, their exposure to telecom, three sectors which have been in the news for all the wrong reasons. And it's not a small exposure. I mean, to real estate, uh, most of these mid and large cap banks have exposure to as high six to eight percent. Do you think that perhaps, if not now, but to a longer extent does pose some systemic risks or would you not look at that theory right now? Absolutely, because crisis in banking is always uh, very, very sensitive in the sense banking stands in the right in the epicenter of the any uh, financial architecture because the money flow, it, it, it guides the money flow. So any crisis in banking bound to create some uh, scams scams or side effects and the other, other system as well. So and moreover, for uh, banking is the synonym for credibility. So that is the reason it's so highly regulated. So uh, there is no way one can hide away from the fact that any problem in the banking one should be taking very very seriously as far as microfinance is concerned earlier, earlier people used to say microfinance is a sunrise sector even before sunrise that sector has already sunset so uh, in, in the sense uh, nothing is happening in the sector and already it is a written off and then I have been talking in so many MBA colleges when, whenever you go to business plan competition one thing is assured at least one or two teams will definitely propose microfinance institution as their theme of making money because it definitely caught the average Indian's theme no question about that but it ha unfortunately adding some capital market angle to it, some greedy element to it, some capitalism and lack of transparency element to it. The, a, a, a vague, uh, ambiguous business model has been created somewhere between socialism and uh, capitalism. And uh, in, in that process, uh, the whole equation has been uh, has been stretched to a level. Probably uh, the word microfinance itself has lost the feel-good factor, as in the case of real estate. Because real estate, the main problem with the real estate is that fund managers have lost that feel-good factor. Now, people, are, they, they are not even ready to hear whether that is a, a low valuation, high valuation, good demand, bad demand, that is a different. Real estate, we don't want to invest. Microfinance, we don't want to invest. So that is one major, major uh, major major issue because one should be uh, carefully craft the image building around it what IT has done in India so similar exercise has to be done because if, now I think if RBA and government as they have been talking about microfinance uh, related uh, regulations and guidelines after that if some image comes back some some feel-good factor comes back then it's a different issue but as of now the sector is uh, in uh, just looks good on paper but not in uh, practice. So do you think uh, the concerns out there which are like compression of net interest margins concerns on credit growth and uh, squeeze on, uh, on, the credit, on the liquidity size. Do you think these are genuine concerns, uh, not really overblown, but are there actually going to play out in the next few months? Banks will grow at least two times, two times in next uh, four years. No question about it. We have so much happening in the economy, and the banks are proxy to the economy. So the no way that banks will miss the growth. No question about that. It will grow. Only point is uh, again the valuation point of view. Most of it has been uh, factored in. That's the only concern. And RBI has been uh, tightening the tight tightening the screws wherever possible through regulations and increasing the provisioning limits. And especially for real estate, they are trying to ensure whatever happened in uh, US or Europe that kind of same problems won't happen in uh, India again. Uh, RBA, whenever it has, it has to choose between stability and growth, it often chooses stability, not the growth. So, I mean, not because 
if it has to choose between. And uh, so in that context, uh, RBI has been doing well. In 2008, that's why we escaped most of the uh, problems. And what they are doing, I'm completely in, uh, in sync with them. And as far as banking growth is concerned, we will grow. Only thing is that has been factored in the markets. To become them to be very, very good investment bets, only when the valuations come down. Now SBI at, let's say, 2600 looks a lot more promising than 3200 or 3300. Mm -hmm. Punjab and Sindh Bank, that one more IPO is coming, looking fantastic at the pricing they have done. 130 rupees book value, 113 rupees price went. I don't think any other bank is available in the market right now. Uh, it will not be surprising if it sees some 100 times, 200 times over subscription, even in this kind of markets. Because if, if you, you bring out stock, market conditions hardly matters because money always changes opportunities. I, I, be, I believe uh, uh, there are some good themes. And if at all anybody wants to do any single trade in the, in the remaining part of this, this year, it will be IPO application of Punjab and Sindh Bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, lastly, I want to also get your uh, point on uh, commodities, something which largely went unnoticed. I wouldn't say it wasn't in focus, but somehow ignored by the market. Copper has hit a new all-time high, at least on the London uh, exchange. We've seen crude oil inching 90. And of course, uh, the important aspect is pricing power from the OMCs now goes be beyond them because it's now above 90. And of course, uh, some of the other commodities, including base metals, are trading firm. Do you think that also becomes a clear and present danger? Two things. One is uh, uh, the, both the points that you mentioned, oil and metals, related to the macro, major macro economy, global economy. As I have been mentioning, I'm sure a lot of readjustment is happening at US and Europe level, and which will ongoing in the 2011 and 2012 also. That will also be ongoing theme. Crude oil, 2011, $100 plus is almost a given. No, no, uh, there, are no, uh, there is no uh, uh, prices for guessing that. And then as far as uh, uh, metals are concerned, uh, I believe again depends on the growth and then dollar index how it plays up. Uh, I believe what will happen is one major crisis, be it maybe euro-related credibility issues or uh, dollar-related credibility issues and then uh, the flows going all over the place in the process, uh, in, in the process uh, knowingly and unknowingly uh, uh, global economy hurting itself. What, what used to happen for say US Treasury bonds, earlier they used to offer uh, risk-free returns. These days they are offering return-free risks in the sense uh, no return because zero percent uh, and risks are empty. So we, we are talking about a completely different uh, global economy. So as far as metals and crude oil is concerned, crude oil is easy to guess because hundred dollar plus. Metals it depends upon the, how the global economy shapes up. Never, uh, don't mix up your words, it's as plain as it can get. Uh, well that's Jagannatham for you as always. Uh,